Uh, I have the privilege to first introduce our first speaker, Dr. Karesh Abdul Karim, who, as you know, is Associate Scientific Director of Caprisa. And Karesha will give us an overview of HIV infection in young women in Africa. Karesha? Since 1990, from population based surveys undertaken in this province north of Durban, we've noted that women bear about four times more infection compared to men. Not only that, but they acquire HIV infection five to seven years earlier than men. You can see then that. Uh, the prevalence rise earlier and faster in women and depicts at about 66.4% uh, uh, around their 30s. Uh, whereas with regard to men, it peaks much later at about uh, 40. What I will show you is how can we use phylogenetics to understand this process. So we perform a, phylogen a community-wide phylogenetic studies so we sequenced 1,589 virus genomes from the population, and that represents 87% of the people with a detectable viral load above 1,000. What we are, we are doing there is to identify probable recent infections on this community. We needed to better understand the high risk of HIV infection in young women. And we chose to look at exposure, vulnerability, and what are things that may be impacting on HIV prevention technologies. And you saw from Tulio's data that one of the important statistics that emerged from the clustering is 39% of the men who could be linked with an adolescent girl and a young woman can also be linked with a woman in her 30s. Along with my colleagues at the Center for Infection and Immunity and Columbia University and the Caprisa team, uh, we set out to test the hypothesis that the vaginal microbiome or the bacteria that inhabit the vaginal tract may be mediating this inflammation and influencing HIV acquisition. We hypothesized that potentially the interaction between the bacteria and the tenofovir could be a direct interaction where the bacteria are able to metabolize or degrade the tenofovir. That not only can Gardnerella deplete tenofovir in vitro, but it also is actually taking it up into the cell. So the implications of this are really important considering the highest Gardnerella vaginalis prevalence is in l areas that have the highest incidence of new HIV infections in women. We found a significant association between um, the risk of HIV acquisition and genital tract inflammation with an odds ratio of 3.2 um, that was highly significant, um, suggesting that genital tract inflammation, whatever the cause, was a significant driver of HIV um, risk in women from Caprisa 004. And lastly, we're trying to tie these two strands of data in terms of who and why into how do we optimize uh, interventions and strategies for this group, but also inform novel strategies to address the challenges in preventing HIV infection in adolescent girls and young women. And you'll be hearing more about each of these three strands of work in the next set of presentations. Thank you very much.